Daniel Bloodworth, tell us about Euphoria. Tell us about this strange NES game that no one's heard about before. Uh, yeah, well, this is always, this is one of uh, Ryan Stevens' obscurities that we'd, we'd always hear about. Yeah, it, I think uh, it was in our top 10 Metroidvania games. Oh, yeah? I think it made it to awesome. that list. Yeah, it's, uh, well, the reason we haven't heard about it is because it was a game that didn't actually come to the States right. until Virtual Console. Uh, and so it was out in Japan, uh, and then it came out in Europe, but it never made it here. And uh, the the title is a play on the fact that there are four characters. So you four e a. That's why it's spelled so weird. Yes. Um, and so you start off with this little guy who looks like a penguin or a snowman, depending on uh, your interpretation. Mine is oh. snowman. And uh, his name is Bop Louie. Okay, great name. And. Uh, and yeah, you, you, you kind of start at this point on the map and uh, you work your way out from there. You have to find uh, his friends, the other three characters, uh, and then along the way you'll get uh, special attacks and then you need to find the three keys that will get you to uh, open up this door that leads to the final boss, more or less. Would you call it Metroidvania? Uh, I th think it's, a l I mean, basically, but it's a little weird to call it that just because Castlevania wasn't doing anything like that yet. You know? Oh, the, yeah, right. It was years before Castlevania went in that direction. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, it's it's definitely a fun little game. One thing that's, you know, like when you're first starting out that's that's kind of strange to get used to is that you have to always, you can't just like, uh, you, know, you, you know, his name's Bop Louie, you can't just bop on guys like you can in Mario just by like hitting them. You have to always push down to stomp on them. So cool. if, you just, if you just land on them, you're going to get hurt. Uh, and then uh, health is also a strange thing because you always start. Yeah, I guess that's very Metroid-like too. I guess is you always start with a very small amount of health, and then it, you can grind enemies to get more health. Or uh, there are these like uh, medicine pickups that you find that will give you give you more health over time. Oh, the, like permanent hearts onto your hearts. Basically. You get extra health containers, but cool. then you but those will stay empty unless you find the medicines. Ouch. That will fill them up. Huh. Okay. Um, but uh, but yeah, it's 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 got really big sprites. It's a really cool game to look at. The animations, the crawling animations, are hilarious. All of the animations are hilarious. They're interesting looking characters, I would say. Yeah, and uh, and as a game, you know, I, I I picked it up to stream, and I didn't really have a lot of prep. Like I I spent a little bit of time just adjusting the control, so I wasn't a total noob on the stream. But then that night, I was like, uh, I want to play more of this game. So uh, I was like, I was like, weighed my options. Like, okay, well, I can take the Wii U that it's on home, mm -hmm. and then set it up at home, or I can just set it up in the back. But then there are all these guys back there working on Comic Con stuff, and I was like, oh, I'll just sit, I'll just sit in the streaming room. I just everything's already set up there. I'll just plug it in the streaming room. What time is it right now? Uh, it was like eight after eight, something okay. like that. All right, we've all gone home. Everyone's gone home. Yep. Uh, and I played it for ten or fifteen minutes, and like, why don't I just keep streaming? Okay. So I turned on the stream and mm -hmm. I, I I kept going for like the next uh, it's like three and a half hours or so. Uh, played through the whole game uh, on the stream with like uh, this like core group of like thirty people hanging out and watching me and asking me all kinds of random questions. So you were so smitten by this game that you beat it in one day. Yeah. You stayed after hours at work to play through the rest of Euphoria. Yeah, until uh, a little after midnight. Pretty much. What is it? What was so appealing to you? Uh, you know, it's, yeah, I think it was just that, but I, I, I think there's a sense of, yeah, like I like the, the, diff like the different characters and the exploration and, and how their different abilities are, because they are kind of weighted to, to different environments. So, you know, the, and, and there's a lot of humor in there too. So like one of the things being like, okay, this guy looks like a penguin or a snowman, but he's terrible at icy areas. He'll just slip and fall over. So you need the, the fiery lizard guy to, you know, to, to go on ice. Uh, and when you get the, the fiery lizard guy's upgrade, he doesn't blow fire. He turns people into ice cubes. <laughs> <You know? laughs> so they're like, yeah. they're just constantly playing with your expectations. Uh, and then the, there's the ghost. Uh, his name is Shades. He's got these big sunglasses on. And when you get his special attack, he lifts his sunglasses up. His eyes pop out of his head and home in and, and kill all the enemies on the screen. And his name is Shades? Yeah. That's cool. That's really cool. <laughs> and then uh, the last guy you end up getting uh, is like, I forget what his name is, but he's sort of like a fishy, froggy kind of thing. Okay. And he can actually walk under the water. So 
the other like the two like shades and bop louis like you get in the water and they just panic they can't do anything sure uh and then the lizard leon he he can go across the surface of the water but you need the the frog guy to actually go go deep and get to hidden treasures under there um i'd say the the thing that's kind of maybe a little bit annoying about it is there is a lot of backtracking and kind of trial and error to, to figure out how to get to places so it's like you get way over to the, like the far right of the screen and it's like oh i can't actually do anything here and so wa- wander your way back through another area and try to figure out like okay where's the next thing that i need to find so uh those things, those things that block you from going to the next area, is it only just not having the right dude, or are there powers that these dudes get that also allow you to? It, it's a little bit of both. Like the one thing that, that really opens the map up is eventually you get a uh, power up for Bop Louis that allows him to climb up walls. Oh, okay. So yeah, any like vertical that. surface, you just zip right up to the top, and 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 there you go. You've 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 got it. So there's a lot of areas that you have to have that. There's a you know, and then there's other areas where you have to have the the guy to go underwater, and that's that kind of thing. Uh, I just, uh, it's amazing to me, this game has the second life today. Do you know? I think it came yeah. out pretty late into the NES's it's life like 91. cycle. 91. Yeah, yeah, exactly. We're all playing Super Nintendo at that point. Uh, and so it, it's pretty crazy, you know, that it, wait, are we playing Super Nintendo in 91? Yeah, at yeah. the end of 91. But it, right. at the same time, this wasn't, you know, even out in the U.S. Right. So, so it would have been a couple of years later. There were definitely there. games in the U.S. and, you know, 91 that people were playing even to like 92 93 yeah but it's just to me it's like uh you know a lot of people just say that like the reason that we're attached to older games is nostalgia this wasn't nostalgia for you you've never played this game before but you still en- enjoyed it yeah yeah i thought the controls were fine i thought it was you know a fun group of guys and and then like the backtracking thing you know that's just something this is one of the first games that did that so you can kind of be a little bit of forgiving with it's like oh every time i die i start in the same place because it's not that huge of a map. Yeah. And uh, and yeah, I mean, this is even before Super Metroid, so there weren't there weren't a lot of lessons to be learned yet. There weren't a lot of games like this. Yeah, and it holds up today. Yeah, it very much does. Uh, and then there's a really towards the end of the game, I set this as a highlight on the Twitch channel because I thought it was really funny. There was this super hard section uh, with a lot of lava and a lot of places where you had to time jumps. Like you had to basically use the ice cube ability, time jumps on top of these enemies. Get across the lava, and then you know, and, and it was really really hard to get it get it right. And then when you get to the boss, uh, he comes at you with all this armor and stuff. But then when he when he when you uh, when you knock the armor off, then the boss is just so so sad and disappointed that he just stands there, and you just, def- you, just you just beat on him for his second form while he stands there and does nothing. Crazy things like that that I haven't seen in any video game since 91. Yeah, wow. You found an innovator. (laughs) All right, uh, that is our time with Euphoria Blood. Uh, Thanks for introducing it to everyone, to a new audience. Thank you for being part of extending that weird game's life. Yeah, that's fun. Is it an official recommendation? Oh, absolutely. Cool. Yeah, just find it. It just came out on Wii U Virtual Console. I played it on the original Virtual Console. Obviously, it's not going to really make any difference if you're on a Wii U. <laughs> Just, uh, yeah, grab it and, and play it. 